Hey guys, today we have the Lenovo Legion Y520. For your ports, we got your power, ethernet, USB 2.0, and your audio jack. On the other side, we got USB Type-C, SD card reader, two USB 3.0s, and your HDMI port. So the model I have here is the highest one that they offer. So that means we have the Core i7, 7700HQ, 16 gigs of RAM, and Nvidia's GTX 1050Ti. And for the price, it is about $1,250. So the big question is, can this laptop edit in 4K? And to be honest, it really can. I've been shooting with the GH5, mostly 4K, 8-bit, 60p. I'm staying away from 10-bit just because Adobe is having a lot of trouble with it. A lot of forms are saying so, so I'm not going to touch that for a while. The Palmer's is soft, is a nice matte material, so it is very comfortable. The keyboard is nice and spacious, so it is comfortable to use as well. Going back to the editing, making the in and out points and dragging your clips to your timeline is very smooth. Now something I want to try out myself is editing with the power supply not connected. And obviously you don't get the same performance and you can easily tell it's a lot choppier when you edit and going down to 1 4 or even 1 8 it's still choppy so it's not fun editing without being plugged into the wall. So for battery life I did get a little under 1 hour. And of course plugging it back in gets a lot more smoother, a lot more performance. So when you edit or when you're playing games it's more ideal to have your power supply plugged into your laptop. So editing on this machine, it's pretty comfortable. It's not annoying or it's not too laggy to the point where I can't edit on this machine. When you press the play button to preview something, it does have a little pause, but it's not too bothersome. And scrubbing through your timeline or through your clip, for the most part, it is not too laggy. It is pretty smooth, but if you are editing on a very big project, then you will notice some stuttering. Now for traveling, it is a bit on a bigger side. It is a 15 inch screen and it weighs about 5.3 pounds, but it is pretty thin. It's about 1.01 inches. So for a gaming laptop, that is on a thinner side. For outdoor uses, it does have a matte screen, so it does help in those situations, but I do wish it is a little bit brighter. So overall, this laptop can edit smoothly from importing, playing through your clips, scrubbing through your clips, putting in and out points, dragging them into your timeline. The editing process does work very well on this machine. Now my last vlog was about six minutes and exporting this thing took about over 20 minutes. And the same goes with my other videos where they are a little bit shorter, about five minutes or so. And they're still around 20 minutes. So if you hate long rendering times, then this machine is probably not for you. Now you can do some light tasks while you wait for the rendering times, but since this is a gaming machine, I might as well try some League of Legends while my project is rendering. So as expected, it seems like I am getting over about 60 frames per second, but it's not the smoothest. I mean, it is still playable, but you will get a lot of choppiness while it's rendering. After all, you are just waiting for the time to go by so your video is done exporting. So this is a gaming laptop after all, and of course it can play some mid-tier games. For the most part, I play CSGO and League and a little Overwatch, and they all work perfectly fine. So if you're on a really tight budget and you want to edit 4K and still have a good gaming machine, then I wouldn't really look any further. This is a really good recommendation. For $1,250, you can't really go wrong with it. You may have some stuttering while editing, but the answer to the question is yes, you can edit on this laptop. So that's it for me guys. I'll see you guys later. That's still good, right? Yeah, you went out just a little bit when you went down, but it's fine.